I'm going to show you how to make Creative Kiwi's large pig applique and for this I'm going to be using my 5x7 hoop, some wash away stabilizer and this is the fabric looking type not the plastic type it's this one that you need. I've got a selection of threads I've got pink for the main body and I've got black and white for the eyes. I'm going to be using some pins now these might look special on a funny shape but you can use any pins that you've got available and we're going to be using those around the edge of the hoop to keep the tension in our stabilizer. I've got some double curved scissors and a pair of squizzers. Um, you can use any um, curved sharp scissors um, that you've got available to you. Um, the double curve just makes it easy to get in the hoop and I like to use my squizzers just because I can get into really small areas with them but you use what you've got available to you. I've got some masking tape that's going to hold um, fabric in place while we stitch it so that it doesn't move and I've got my fabrics and batting cut to size. So let's get started. The first thing that you're going to do is load the file pig01 into your machine and we're going to start with the body of the pig then we're going to hoop two sheets of wash away stabilizer so I'm going to place my first one over and my second one on top and then place the inner frame into the center and push it down just want to make sure that your hoops are hoop tops are level and then we're just going to add a few pins around the top edge of the embroidery hoop so you're going to take your pin and where the two hoops meet just push it through your stabilizer and then double it back through and that provides an anchor so that your, your uh, stabilizer can't pull down and lose tension. And we're going to do the same on the other side. So push it through, double it back round and it sits nice and neatly on top of your hoop. Now we're going to do the same for the ends as well. And the bottom. If you've got bigger hoops then you'll put additional pins in along the sides. So our stabilizer is now hooped and it's nice and taut in the hoop. You're now, you're now going to pop that into your machine and you're going to stitch round number one and that's going to give you your outline for placing your fabrics. I'm using a bright pink so that you can see what I'm doing. Um, and I'm using a lighter pink fabric so everything should show up nicely. We're now going to add the backing fabric so you're going to turn your hoop over and I've used a matching bobbin so that you can see the outline here. You don't have to because this isn't a reversible design and you're going to place your fabric over the outline and then use some masking tape or painters tape just to secure it in place so that it can't move during stitching. And then on the front we're going to add our batting and our top fabric, our front fabric. And we're going to add a little bit of tape just to hold that in place as well and we use tape in the place of pins. We're now going to pop that back into your machine and stitch round number two and that's going to secure the whole lot together. Mm -hmm. 
Next we're going to remove all the tape from both back and front and we're going to trim up all the excess fabric on the outside of the stitch line both from the back and the front and I like to start with the back because it's very easy to get carried away and forget about it. So I'm just using my scissors and cut into it and then just cut round the edge and I'm cutting close to the stitch line but being careful not to cut the actual stitching. Now we're going to do exactly the same to the front. You just want to check all around the edge that there's no missed pieces of stabiliser because you don't want them poking through your satin stitching because once that's stitched it's very difficult to get rid of them without them showing. So I'm just going to make sure that, especially in all the areas that's a little bit tight like this, that's, um, that there's none um, sticking out. Okay, I think we're good there. We're now going to pop that into your machine and stitch round number three. That's going to do the zigzagging all the way around the edge. Before we go any further we're just going to check that there's no threads or uh, we call them pokies showing through and if there are then you can cut them off now. If you cut the stitching because they're poking out too far it doesn't matter you can actually re-stitch round number three again over the top it will it, it doesn't make any difference but it will make a big difference to your finished piece so always take the time to check. You'll notice along here that there is no um, zigzagging. That's because that's going to become our join line for the second uh, um, to the second file. So once you're happy that it's all clean and nothing poking through the edge, you can then pop your hoop back into your machine and stitch round number four. And that's going to do the satin stitching over the top of the zigzagging. Next we're going to stitch the little heart detail on his rump so you might want to change your thread for that and then you're going to stitch round number five. And that completes the first part so now we're going to free this from the hoop so I'm going to turn this over and 
you can trim off all the little thread ends I'll do that afterwards and I like to cut mine around the edge of the stitch line and you don't have to worry about getting too close because at the end when all the pieces are together we're going to be removing the remaining soluble water soluble stabilizer sorry um, with some water All that remains now is to trim this raw edge very close to the stitch line because that's going to be our joining edge for the next piece and the closer you trim it the easier your joining will be. And that's our first piece completed. You're now going to want to load file pig02 into your machine and then you're going to hoop your wash away stabilizer as before. So there's my first sheet and the second sheet down and then the center hoop. Make sure that there's no wrinkles. and make sure that your hoop pieces are nice and flat to each other and then you're going to pin the top edge so pin through and then back through the stabilizer You're now going to pop that into your machine and stitch round number one and that's going to give you your placement outline as before. Turn your hoop over and place your backing fabric over the outline and then you're going to tape it in place. You're now going to place your batting on the front and your front, front fabric over the top of that and tape it down. You're now going to pop that into your machine and stitch round number two to secure them. Next you're going to stitch round number three and that's going to be the cheeks so you might want to change your thread colour here if you do change it before you stitch it. I've changed mine to a lighter pink. Next we're going to stitch the white of the eyes so you want to change your thread in your machine and then you're going to stitch round number four. Next we're going to stitch the black of the eyes and the facial features so you're now going to want to change your thread to black and then you're going to stitch round number five.
We're now going to trim up the excess fabric both back and front. So I've removed the tape from the front. As long as you trim the excess up before the zigzagging, it really doesn't matter when you do it. The important thing is that it's done before you actually do the zigzagging around the edge. So we're going to turn this over and remove the last piece of tape and trim up. And now we're going to do the front. You're now going to pop that into your machine and stitch round number six and that's going to do the zigzagging around the edge and leave a gap where you're going to join the second piece. So I've put the original pink back into my machine for this. In this gap here we're now going to place um, the first part that we made. So I'm going to turn this around so that I can see what I'm doing. And you're going to place this stitch line over the top of this stitch line between the zigzag stitching gap. So place that down. And then you're going to tape or pin this part in, in place and when you if you use pins um, make sure that they're completely out of the way of the stitch line I like to keep mine over by the hoops and I'm just going to use a little bit of tape here just to hold that down and flat and then I'm going to do the same here and right over by the edge of my hoop for my pin. Once you're happy with the placement, you can pop your, your hoop back into your machine and stitch round number seven. And that's going to zigzag along this join here to join the two parts. You want to check along your join line to make sure that these areas here aren't poking out of the, of the zigzag stitching because if they do then I strongly advise you to turn your hoop over, take a stitch unpicker and unpick, I, just run, I would just run a, an unpicker underneath the, the stitching carefully. Uh, along that um, join line there. Take care not to cut into your stabiliser though and it's better to do it from the back than the front if you possibly can. So that's how to sort it out and then you would just re-stitch uh, round number seven again um, after, position, uh, after repositioning your body piece. When you're happy with your stitching, 
pop your hoop back into your machine and you're going to stitch round number eight and that's going to do the satin stitching all around the edge of the head and around the snout. So that's all the stitching complete all we need to do now is remove this from the stabilizer and then clean up the edges so I'm just going to remove the two pins that I put in earlier turn my hoop over and cut around the edge and here you, where the body is you want to be careful not to cut it so I hold my fingers underneath Just going to trim this back a little bit. Okay, I've got some warm water and a cotton bud. I'll just dip it in and gently rub it around the edge. And that will dissolve all the excess stabilizer. Just a little bit more to do around the edge here. And that's our piggy finished. I hope you enjoyed this stitch along. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to be notified of new videos as they're published. Do pop along to Creative Kiwi's Facebook group. There's always lots of ideas and inspiration there for everybody and thank you very much for joining me.